Hi everyone, I'm Meredith. And listen, I'm just a girl still stuck in my apartment, still looking for someone to talk to. So I found some people. My guests today are Jimmy Ludwig and Mark Aldridge. They're two Broadway actors trying to help the theater community, which has been shut down since March because of the pandemic with beer. It's called the Curtain Up Brew, and we're going to talk all about that. But first, don't forget to like and subscribe to the Let's Talk About It YouTube channel. I don't want you missing new episodes. And when you do, make sure you hit that little notification bell right there so you never miss a video. Go ahead, like and subscribe. Mark, Jimmy, and I, we'll all wait. We're not going anywhere. Did you do it? Okay, great. Mark, Jimmy, thank you so much for being here. Let's talk about it. Hey, thanks so much for having us. Really appreciate it. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So you're just, you're two Broadway guys and you're trying to save Broadway and Great White Way with beer? Is that what it's gonna take? I mean, I think it's what we're all looking to these days. I mean, you, you could do worse, right? You could totally <laughs> do worse. <clears throat> But that is kind of it in a nutshell. That's what Curtain Up is all about. It's a way to raise as much money as possible for the Actors Fund, for live performance and the live performance industry, not just Broadway, but but every bit of the live performance industry is are just yeah. in free fall right now. Everything from music venues to, to dance studios and, and little stages in everybody's town everywhere in the, in the country to, to Broadway itself. It's all a mess. It's all shut down and needs all the help it can get. And not just to raise money, but also to raise awareness. Um, a lot of, you know, there's so much noise in our lives right now from every direction. And I think a lot of people don't realize just the dire straits that entertainment workers are in right now. <sighs> but nine months of unemployment with no prospect of work and no end in sight is to people, you know, especially, especially our corner of the industry, uh, we're both actors, you know, our health insurance is tied to our work weeks. So we're watching our family and our friends all falling off of health insurance as the weeks tick by. And, um, and it's inevitable that, you know, eventually that's going to happen to everybody. Yeah, going to happen to us. So take me back because Curtain Up has spawned out, out of some bigger efforts. You guys are also known as the happy hour guys. Talk to me about, all right, seems simple enough, but tell me about how this title came about. In 2003, Mark and I ended up together doing a show at the Ford's Theater in Washington, D.C., uh, a production of 1776, as it happens, and we kept running into each other at these great bars in, in D.C., and we started talking about historic bars and how cool we thought pub culture was, and Mark, who was a huge uh, Anthony Bourdain fan, said, I think there's a show here, and three years later, we shot our pilot at McSorley's in New York City, the oldest, possibly the oldest continuously serving bar in the United States. And then everything sort of kept, we still do cool bars that we love and historic bars, but now it's very craft focused because we love what the craft industry is all about. And we found a real uh, harmony between craft and Broadway. The mm -hmm. two really sort of match in a weird way. And I'll let Mark take it from here. Um, yeah. It, it, back when the Travel Channel was still about travel, um, <laughs> we came across this idea, and and yeah, we sort of we lucked into as so you know many things happen this way. The the craft beer community was really just taking off while we were our our sort of baby content creators, um, and so we grew up together. And as we got to know them, we realized that those stories were worth telling to us as storytellers. Um, brewers are fascinating people, and they're they're both scientists and craftsmen. And we've realized that that in a strange way, actors and and our creative community had a lot in common with that creative community. So we've been trying to marry the two for, for a long time, and then came up with the idea of what what we now call the Broadway Brews Project, which where is where we take uh, the cast of a hit Broadway show and pair them up with a craft uh, brewery, most of them in the greater New York area for convenience sake. And we bring the actors to the brewery where wow. they create a beer together. And that experience has been fascinating to watch every single time because they always think they don't have anything in common and they come out best friends. Um, 
and then they brew a beer and it's released uh, to benefit a charity of the choosing of the, the brewery and the cast. So we've done five of those uh, mm -hmm. at the end of 2019. Um, heading towards what we, we thought would be the logical conclusion, the Broadway six pack, we were gonna do number six. And then March arrived. Let me ask, what are, what are the five other beers? I know that there's one for Hamilton. And then I mm -hmm. also wanna know what you were planning for number six before the pandemic. Well, we had a bunch of ideas for number six, but let me just take you through the first five. So yes, we, we kind of hit it out of the park after actually, we got a lot of no's first. We got a lot of, it wasn't even no from a lot of producers. We just got this sort of vacant, like, huh, look. <laughs> and, then, and then Hamilton said yes. And obviously then everything and changed Hamilton because- Hamilton says yes. Yes. Um, and that beer ironically uh, is a Gun Hill Brewing beer. It's called Rise Up Rye and it's still being made. And it's being served at this little performing arts venue and sports venue called Madison Square Garden. Have you heard oh, of it? Yeah, 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 yeah. I remember that place. Oh <laughs> yeah. uh, yes, fond memory. <laughs> yeah. So uh, um, Mark will elaborate, but I'll just give you the rundowns of shows. We started with Hamilton and then we went from Hamilton. We did a beer with School of Rock and then we did a beer with Waitress. And then we did a beer with Phantom of the Opera. We did a Phantom of the Opera beer. Number five was Come From Away, which was an amazing experience. And then we had, Mark, we had a couple of finalists, as I recall. We had like two or three other shows that we were looking at. What were the two shows? Uh, we had a hoped that, we had hoped and we had begun the process of reaching out to Moulin Rouge. Okay. We were hoping that, that, that they would possibly be interested. Um, there were, who else? There was somebody else really, um, who else besides Moulin Rouge, Mark, did we, were we talking about? Beetlejuice. It feels like a hundred years ago. Beetlejuice, that's right, Beetlejuice. Really, really, Beetlejuice. really wanted to do it. And we, yeah, they came and asked us. Yeah, um, and, and we loved them. And, you know, and their story is such a sad one now with everything that happened since the shutdown and their theater, you know, moving on to another show. And so, so it was, yeah, there were all sorts of twists and turns before we found our way to number six, which was, um, we took a look around and we didn't, want to stop and we didn't want to wait and we looked at the the sort of desperate need of all of the people that we know um yeah. and care about and realized that while broadway had been giving back to all of these various charities through the other beers that it was time for broadway to get some for itself um yeah. people who who make not just broadway but but live entertainment across the country um, and we realized that, that this was actually much bigger than any of the other ones we'd, we'd done before and it needed more. It just yeah. needed more behind it. It needed more than one brewery and the, and the need was so vast that we needed to sort of put out the call to, to everyone in the brewing community to, to give us a hand. Yeah, so the, the model is uh, what we, what's called an open source beer model. So instead of us going to a single brewery, we created a website that said, this is the curtain up beer. These are the, this is the charity or the type of charity that we're looking for this beer to raise money for. Here's the recipe, here's the label, and all the resources are here on this website. Any brewery in the country or in the world can come grab those resources, brew their version of this beer, and then forward proceeds from the sales of that beer, both to the Actors Fund and to a local charity in their community, if, if they want to do it that way. And so it's, it's much, much bigger than the others could ever have been because that was one beer and one brewery. And thus far with the Curtain Up Beer Initiative, we have, is it over, we're over 35 breweries now yeah. wow. um, in, nine, in nine states. Wow, and so. how much has that raised so far for both the, uh, the funds for Broadway and local charities as well. Well, the beers themselves have just started hitting the market. Mm -hmm. So, so it'll be until those beers have completely sold through and then the brewers can take that money, figure out how much money that was made and then they can make those decisions. So it's going to be a long, it'll be, this project will go well into and possibly even past 2021 because a brewery will, will say, we want to brew this beer, but we can't put it in the tanks until june you know so then they'll do it then and, and so it'll be uh it'll be an ongoing stream of money so thus far there are only two versions of this beer that have even been released wow. um the gun hill the gun hill brewing version and uh, a brewery upstate called slickfin and there are what is it three more mark that are about to drop 
There are uh, at least three more. Yeah, we've yeah. got Big Alice Brewing in uh, in Long Island City, uh, Destination Unknown Brewing Company out on Long Island, and Bound by Fate Brewing uh, in upstate New York as well. Oh, and Wolf and Warrior in White Plains. All four of those beers will come out in the next within the next four weeks. Yeah. Unbelievable. Yeah. yeah. Now it's really fun. This is it's a incredible idea it's such an important idea you have executed but rewind a little bit i cannot imagine coming up with a new beer finding breweries in the middle of that pandemic thing was easy <laughs> <laughs> how did you uh, tackle that one of the things that we tell all the brewers when we speak to them uh, because we know that they've had a horrible year too i mean everybody has it's difficult yeah. for small businesses to to be forging ahead right now, let alone thinking about doing something that gives back to the, to someone else. We we totally get that. So we tell them to give what they can, but keep what they need. So we're hoping that this actually will get some nice attention for the breweries as well. It was sort of daunting at first, obviously, because the logistics were were pretty huge, but they were very different from the other Broadway Brewers projects we'd done because right. that was about wrangling cast and getting them to breweries and all this. This was literally about first making a connection with a brewery that um, that would communicate open? with us. Yeah, you know, it was open. It was open to the idea. Would create the recipe and Gun Hill in the Bronx did all of those things. And I, I really will send you some of this beer. It's delicious, <laughs> and and. And it's the, you know, the second one to hit the market and it's available right now. You can go on their website and order it. What kind of beer is the curtain up beer? It's a, it's a hazy IPA, so, or a New England IPA. Um, so it's, it's sort of softer and fruitier than what a lot of people think of as traditional IPAs. Um, it's, it's a juicy. Lot, it's juicy, yeah. Yep. It's got lots of tropical notes. Yeah. It's a 6.5% ABV, so it's not like crazy, crazy high alcohol. Um, it's really approachable. It's one of the, the most popular styles of beer right now, which is why Dave wanted to do it, because if you're going to make a beer for so many people, you want it to be one that people want to drink. So. Yeah, yeah. Now, for those that aren't familiar with the Actors Fund, where so uh, much of the proceeds from the Curtain Up Beer and the Curtain Up Initiative will go, tell us what this organization does for the theater community for the Broadway community, how it's given back so far during the pandemic and what it really needs to keep helping people who are still dealing with the shutdown. So the Actors Fund is an astonishing organization. They're the kind of organization where if you say, if you get in touch with them, first of all, they don't just deal with actors, they're for everyone in live entertainment. They, everyone from circus performers to musicians, to stage technicians, to agents, to ushers, to actors. And they're the kind, they do direct assistance to people. They have a numerous programs. If you need, you know, to learn things, if you need, you know, but just, if you need just direct assistance, if you reach out to them on a Monday and say, my rent is due on Wednesday and I need money now, you'll have a check by Tuesday. I mean, it's that kind of place. And since the beginning of the pandemic, when the last time we talked to them about this specifically was months ago, probably in September or October, maybe September. And at that point, to that point in the pandemic, they had already given out 16 million in direct assistance across the entertainment industry. And I so, think, I, go I ahead. Think it's important to note also that um, they have uh, offices in New York, Chicago, and Los Angeles, but they really are a nationwide organization. They, they reach out to every small town across the country, um, and, and it, it really is a nationwide effort on their part. So I don't want people to think that it's just focused on New York or just focused on Broadway or big cities. It's everybody in the industry um, has, has uh, access to them and, and their resources. Yeah. Do you hope eventually to have the, the beer in theaters? For people to buy as well? Absolutely. Yeah. I would love that. Absolutely. Yeah. I would love to see uh, breweries make it more than once. Um, and one of the biggest breweries, Breckenridge Brewery out in Colorado, has already agreed to brew it at least twice, maybe three times. And it, honestly, it, it is so good that I think it's going to find its way into breweries' rotations. And then I would yeah. love to see it just be, you know, in the concessions at theaters around the country. Wouldn't uh, that be amazing? Yeah. Oh. That's, that's sort of my little pie in the sky dream is that, you know, a year from now, 
uh, I'll pull into Phoenix and, and the, the concession stand will be selling curtain up beer at the tour of My Fair Lady. I, I definitely hope so. And I hope we can all get back into the theater just sooner rather than later. But in the meantime, good work with Curtain Up. This is like really cool and very inspirational and it's something that can help a lot of people. And it's tasty too. I'll it take your word for it. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you, Jimmy and Mark for being here. Thanks again for sharing Curtain Up with us. This has been Let's Talk About It. We'll talk to you next time.